Hi guys, this is Jude from EasyTex. It's obvious that Microsoft's push for Windows users to have a Microsoft account isn't ending anytime soon. They have continued to block various backdoors through which users are able to install Windows 11 without having to use a Microsoft account. Here I'll be demonstrating what I consider to be the most reliable way to bypass this persistent request for Microsoft account and still install Windows 11. The thing about most of the methods you will see being demonstrated on various platforms is that they may work under some circumstances and not work in other circumstances. For instance, the OOBE method, which I have also demonstrated in a past video, relies on pulling up your command line terminal to run commands. So also several other methods you will see out there, they rely on the command line terminal. However, on some computers, for some reasons, the Windows 11 installer won't allow the command line terminal to come up. So you could just have your luck with those solutions in some situations. The solution I'll be demonstrating here applies to both the older and the latest Windows 11 builds, be it 23H2 or 24H2. It has consistently worked for me in all situations, and I believe that it will continue to work even with future builds. The good thing is that you only need to perform this process once on your installation media, and then you can continue to use it for installations across different computers. And now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the only tool you need for this process is Rufus. You simply need to use Rufus to pre-configure your installation media to exempt the Microsoft account login process during setup. Rufus, as you might already know, is a free tool for creating installation media, be it Windows, Linux, or any other installation media. It is a very reliable tool at that. For this method, the guys at Rufus have added an option to their more recent versions, I think beginning with version 3.19 to enable you bypass both the Windows 11 requirements and the Microsoft account signing steps. In fact, you could also preset your privacy settings and username already. I will leave a link to download Rufus down in the video description. That link should take you to this page. Here, simply scroll down to where it says download. And under that, click on the latest version to download it. As of today, it's version 4.5, so I'll just click on it. After downloading, simply click to run and you should see an interface like this pop up. Here you can choose to either use an existing ISO file which you must have downloaded already or download an ISO file directly from Rufus here. Sometimes you might not see this option to download which is usually under the drop down on the select button. If that is your case, simply click on this settings icon below. On the check for updates, use the drop down to select daily. Then, under the Include Beta Versions, use the drop-down to select Yes. Close the pop-up and also close the tool. Now, relaunch Rufus and you should have the drop-down that allows you to choose the download option. After choosing that, click on Download. And that should pop up a window like this. Here, select the version of Windows you're interested in. Obviously, we're interested in Windows 11. And then I will hit continue. Then after some time, it will ask you to select the release. Here, I will choose the latest release, which is the only one available anyways, and hit continue. Then it asks for the edition. Here, it only has these three editions together. I will hit continue. Then select language. Hit continue. The architecture is automatically 64-bit. You can choose to download using the browser. I will just let it download here on Rufus. So I'll hit download. It then asks for where I want to save the ISO. I'll save mine on the desktop. And that should immediately start the download process. And you should have an ISO file like this on your desktop or your chosen location. Now, if you have WinRAR or some other application capable of opening your ISO file, it might assume the icon of that application. So your icon might be different from mine, and that's not a problem. Now, remember, you don't have to do all this if you already have your ISO file downloaded. You can simply use the select button to select the ISO file and then proceed with the rest of the steps. So with the ISO file now downloaded, 
First, I will select the device I want to use for the installation media. Here, I'll be using my 32 gig USB stick. You can select the device that you intend to use. It's important to check that you select the right device because this process would override the data on the device. Next would be to select the ISO file from the location where you saved it. I saved mine on the desktop, so I'll just go there and pick it up. Now, I will leave the image option as standard Windows installation. The partition scheme, I will leave it as GPT. If your installation requires MBR, you can choose that here. Now I will leave all the other options as default and hit start. And that will pop up this dialog box, which gives you various options to customize your Windows installation. The first option here is to remove the generic Windows 11 requirements. That's the RAM, Secure Boot, and the TPM 2.0 requirements. Now, I normally select this option even if the device I'm installing meets these requirements so that in the future, if I want to use this for an unsupported device, it would also work well. Then the next option is to remove the requirement for an online Microsoft account, which is what we're mainly interested in. So I'll have it checked as well. You can then look at the other options to see if they apply to your use case. For instance, you can already choose a username for your PC, so you don't have to write it during the installation. You can also choose your preferred privacy settings. And if you don't want your drive automatically encrypted by BitLocker, you can also check this box here to avoid that. Now, after selecting your preferred settings, hit OK to begin the media creation process. You then get this warning that all data on the device will be destroyed. I'm okay with that, so I'll hit OK to continue the process. Now you just need to wait patiently for this process to complete. When that is done, it should say ready. And then you can now use your installation media to install Windows on any PC without having to sign in with a Microsoft account. So now when it gets to the point where it usually tries to force me to connect to the internet and create a Microsoft account, I now have this I don't have internet option, which allows me to create a local account. So I'll click on that and then click on continue with limited setup. Now Rufus pre-configurations automatically assigns the EasyText username, which I chose during the discretion process, as well as other privacy settings. So basically my Windows setup gets completed automatically from this point all the way to the desktop, which is cool. And if you need a license key to activate your Windows, you can visit our sponsor, Prime Tech Mart, where you can purchase your Windows keys and a bunch of other useful applications very affordably. Applications like Office, Visio, Project Pro, servers and other useful utilities you can use my promo code et20 for a 20 percent discount on any of these keys i will leave their links down in the video description and that is it for this tutorial hope this was able to help you out give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share with anyone you think might want to see drop us a comment if you have any questions or feedbacks don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications on future tech support videos like this one thanks for watching and see you in the next one